John and John, thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. And as you will imagine, the topic I wanted to talk to you about is a life in film, which is done very well here at BF, and I've heard lots of very, very complimentary things about it, so it's made a big impression. Can you begin, before we get to the film, by um, telling me about how you collaborate, how you started to work together and how you share the work between you? Okay, I think I'll start that, because I actually started it in a funny sort of way. I was asked by a friend, a clergy friend, if I would actually film his daughter's wedding. Uh, and I said to myself, I said to him, yes I will. And then I went away and thought about it and thought, actually, I won't be able to do that on my own. Uh, now, John and I already knew each other, but I thought I'd ask John if he was interested in actually coming to help with that. And he said yes, uh, and we collaborated. And that really started um, what became eventually Backstreet Films. But it was a wedding, wedding video, and we set up to be wedding photographers at the time. Um, In 2010. Was it 2010? Yeah, mm. oh right. Yeah. I, I didn't remember the date, but anyway, yeah. So that's how it all started. Um, how we collaborate is, it, he talks a lot. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Doesn't sound like that at the moment. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, yeah, how do we, how do we, do you reckon? Uh, we, we have an understanding that what we want to do is make films, um, plain and simply. Mm. And it so happens that because John's in the clergy, we actually were able to do things that we would never have been able to do as just wedding videographers, yeah. probably. So we made 43 films for the Church of England, which included interviews with the Archbishop of Canterbury twice, um, who says, call me Justin. Call me just, just call me Justin. Just call me Justin. <laughs> and, and we've had a fabulous time in the, in the eight years that Backstreet Films has been going. And we've also done our own separate things. So collaboration is one thing on certain projects, um, because the bigger projects that we do need and require more than one camera, um, that's when we tend to get together. But as you've perhaps seen today, John makes his own films and I make my own films too. But they all come under the auspice of Backstreet Films. That's just our production name and um, it gives us a front, if you like, um, which, which we try to use as a slightly more professional thing than, than just an amateur bunch of people. So that's, that's what we tend to do. And I, and I think when we're actually working together, what tends to happen is that John does a lot of the camera work, not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, frankly, he's got more lenses than I have, so that's, <laughs> that's a start. Uh, and I tend to do the sound and, and, be and the, the scripting. Yeah, and the scripting, that's my sort of role. So, And that's how it worked with the David Cleveland film, uh, A Life Around Film. This is a film that, uh, that I personally have been wishing to make for probably, well, probably since I was a teenager. And I didn't realise that. I mean, I'm 66 now. Um, but in actual fact, uh, as a kid growing up in Liverpool, uh, I, I watched Vision On uh, and was absolutely enthralled with the animation as it obviously was with David at that time and maybe subconsciously that's what got me into filmmaking anyway, or at least sparked the idea. I actually started making sort of professional films, i.e. doing them properly, uh, in 1980 when my first wife uh, bought me a camera uh, and we went to Russia and I made a holiday film basically uh, and that's that really got me started. Um, it was hard in those days because uh, we were using film um, and sound wasn't so easy. Um, but it got me got me going, and it, and it fired something in me that uh, that I just needed to, to keep going with. And John has the same mm. same ideals, mm. uh, so we just we just work extremely well together. Uh, we're just lucky like that, I suppose. But David Cleveland film, yeah. Um, How did you meet him? What, da, what, David. John. Oh, David. David. Well, the thing, the, this. Sorry. Yeah. The, no, go the, the it's point your story is that, case. Um, yeah, it is. that all these years ago, I, I was watching Vision on, and I saw David Cleveland as a prof. But at that time, it was just the prof. Now, I moved down to Colchester in 1969, I think it was, um, and it, and I joined the Cine Club, as it was, the Colchester Cine Club, in about 1980-ish, around about the same time that I actually first picked up a camera. Uh, and it turned out that 
whilst we had our evenings at, at, at the cine club, David would come along and just give us evenings. He would come along and show old films. And of course included in that was the prof. And that's when I made this connection. So a few years later when David actually became our president, I was staggered and I thought, this is amazing. But beyond that, it turns out that David not just made funny films, but he was an important person in TV generally. Uh, and he came up with the film archive, which also in East Anglia we, we knew an awful lot about. And at that point, I thought, David's not getting any younger. This is somebody that needs to have something recorded while he's still able to tell us exactly in his own words what happened. Because when he's gone, when we've all gone, there would be nothing left that we actually first hand. And David's never got an MBE or a CB or anything like that. So this way, we can at least promote him and what he did for TV, which is ultimately what we've done. So we spent a year making it, basically. Oh, yeah. okay, so that, that yeah. was one of the big questions, because yeah. I heard many people muttering around, this is a very big film, it must have taken a long time to do. I think, I think my involvement was much later than, than John's, but uh, I came into it via the club again and met David through that, got to like him, he and I seemed to hit it off a bit uh, and enjoy each other's company. I then started to research it, I was probably about three years before we actually started filming. Started to read around, David gave me his life history, which is a huge thick tome, which is, I won't say what I felt about that, but it, it was interesting and I read it through and got some stuff from that and gradually built up the idea. John then dropped it in my pearly that, that actually here's a film that should be made. Uh, so I just started, I, I, well, the first thing I scripted was actually is actually in the film about halfway through, and we f we shot that, and then we started to think how are we going to start this, how are we going to end it, when are we going to go to the university? All these things began to sort of emerge, and, and it really was scripted on the fly. We also had luckily a friend of John's called Donald Williams, who is a professional actor, and and that meant that we could actually. <coughs> um, have his expertise and he also when he met David he only met him just before he made the film uh, they hit it off they clearly have a relationship and that worked for us it worked on camera and it worked off camera they were joking all the time and it was great but having somebody professional fronting the film takes a lot of pressure off us yeah so if we don't like what we see we just say do it again Don will you and he will uh, and that's the real beauty of working with a professional. Um, so that was, that was really, really helpful. And he, he actually, sorry, he, I'll just to illustrate that, he came up with that opening shot of him in the field. And that was his lines, I didn't script that. He said, well, when I was a kid, I, and he just did his, and walked across the field and said, it happened right here. And, and it was just magic. It still makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, you know, because it worked. So, so from your description of how it evolved, you didn't realise it was going to be a year of your lives. Well, it, it, I mean, it's not like we were doing it every day. So um, I just newly retired. That's the main reason why it was done now rather than before. So I was able to devote more time to it. Um, so we, we needed good days, we were filming outside, um, we were using radio mics, uh, so we needed good weather, uh, we needed to be able to get to the field. So things, although it took us a year, it wasn't full on, um, and, and, it, and David's life has specific items in it that we need to do, so the prof, the archive, what he does now. Um, and what are you going to do in the future? I mean, there were, there were things that are glibly you talk about, but you structure the thing as, and, and you know that these are things you've got to deal with. And so, I, we were lucky. This last year was a, a fabulous, sunny, hot summer, and we actually had more time than, than you would have thought to, to be able to do it. Um, but we had a lot of things also to, to put together, particularly things like the university, who were a bit iffy about letting us film there. Um, so that's why the shots are all outside rather than inside any of the buildings. Um, but everything else, it's sort of, yeah. it's an old cliche, but it sort of made itself. And as soon as you began to put stuff on the editing uh, timeline, you knew that 
you had something there that was going to work and most of it is because of David he's the most incredible person to actually speak to Cameron and be so enthusiastic about it as we were about the project but he was enthusiastic about what he'd done and I think that's that comes over in the film uh, and that made it a lot easier for us and also he was not a prima donna he was not a prima donna he said it's your film do whatever you have to do so we did yeah. <laughs> How did you do the post-production between you? Well, I, I, I probably did the editing, generally, and the structure of the film. As I say, I, we, we, the, the first interview we did was in David's house. Um, and so that was that was quite straightforward. So we just did that, uh, two cameras. Um, and then it, would, then it came down to putting on the time and to edit. Now, David has talked more than I do, so the first interview was probably half an hour or more uh, in a continuous take and he doesn't um and ah very often but you do need to break it and and at that point it was it was obvious that the only way to break this up particularly as it's about his early life and the prof was simply to drop in footage of the actual prof anyway which broke up the rather monotone way that the film was looking and having a sort of a brevity to it that you can have a bit of a laugh because most people if of our era would perhaps know the prof they certainly wouldn't know anything about the archive um, and so to kick off with something that people knew you introduced him to David um, and then all of a sudden you could see that this wasn't a guy that was just mucking around in the field this was somebody who did something very special for the country um, in, even as you see at the end when he's actually uh, presenting the Queen uh, around the archive, as it then turned out uh, in Norwich. We deliberately didn't go to Norwich um, because the reality was that it actually started at Colchester University, the University of Essex, and we wanted to keep it within that, that confine because that's where it really started. Is there anything about the film that you you was either was really difficult to achieve or that um, didn't work that you wanted to work or, you know I'm, I'm looking for the sort of the other problems. side of the coin <laughs> well the, the, one of the first things we wanted to do was uh, actually start the, the, the film in a field but with a drone um, so that we actually had a drone looking over the estuary uh, at Essex and it was going to come down Don was going to walk towards camera uh, and he was going to deliver his lines. The big problem was we didn't have a drone. Um, and it, the times presented themselves that we, that we could only meet at certain times. And so we thought, do you know what, we'll go on site, we'll recce it, we'll see what, uh, what we can do. And Don, as John said, just came up with the opening piece, yeah. basically. Yeah, and the same for the ending. The ending was interesting because we had the, the vision that we would end with his film show in the tent, which we had a little clip of, but we had much, much more footage of that, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then we got the three of them, the three originals, back together again after 20, 25 years or whatever, they hadn't seen each other, on the farm doing their bits and pieces. And we saw them walking away from the camera at one point, just the three of them were chatting about old times. And both of us suddenly said, that's the end shot. So we called them back and said, just walk off again. <laughs> and that was the end shot. But it, but it happened purely by accident. So that wasn't entirely what you asked, but it, it, it was, we hadn't got an ending. It just hadn't happened until that point. So they, yeah, that was a difficult one until they did that walk and then it worked. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. We had no real issues. Um, everything that, there's nothing particularly clever in the film. It's all just straightforward, yeah. simple stuff. The story, the story is the thing that carries it along and David's enthusiasm. Um, we were just lucky that we were the guys that, yeah. that managed to put it together. And the film is now in the archive, so we've, it's done its job which was to save for posterity what David had actually done. Was there any problem getting the clips of the... Old no, because the, the copyright for all of the prof stuff is David's. So that was, that was a, a blessing. Um, the archive material also, because David had collected it, 
that was fine. They they gave their blessing too, uh, so we had absolutely no issues with, with any material, which which also then helped the whole thing because without that original material, it, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked the same way. No, it I think. I, I mean, I think for me, um, I'm hoping that a wider audience will see the film. It, it's lovely. It's been shown to a, a very appreciative audience this morning, and that was terrific. But I'm hoping that we can somehow get it out amongst a wider audience, a more general audience, and then a bunch of dedicated filmmakers, which is always a tricky audience to play to anyway. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens.